Hey guys, so we have another confession thread for you today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you have your own confessions, write them in the comments below and I'll see you at the end of the video. Confession thread. I always include a version of the USA in my settings with their own CIA equivalent. And the not CIA are presented as the good guys most of the time. I cheat whenever I can and only in ways that I can easily defend as understandable mistakes. I don't forget that a buff is supposed to have worn off or that X is supposed to have a penalty. I just pretend to and see if the grip corrects it. I take no pride in getting away with it and it doesn't make winning any sweeter. It's just a dirty habit. I think most people, most are, people. Quite, are quite pumped about though. Yeah. It's like, oh, if sorry. no one points it out, it's like, <laughs> oh, you know, oh, sorry about that. Oh, I didn't realize. <laughs> oh, there you go. I swear. The first and only campaign I ever ran ended abruptly when one of my three players suddenly quit in a huff because one of the NPCs died and he didn't like it. I've been using the excuse of being gun shy from the experience to never GM for the grip ever since. The player in question is still being blamed for every game I chicken out of GMing and he was eventually alienated from the grip entirely. I haven't seen him in years. In reality, he was just a scapegoat. I'm not gun shy or scared of running another campaign. I'm just lazy and GMing takes work. I was happier than hell to end the original game, leech off the grip as a forever player and blame it all on him. Be honest with you, I don't really blame him. You know, yeah, sometimes I, I, I couldn't be arse being a DM for the most part. No, it just there is a lot, involved. There, there is a lot of work to be a good DM. Now, being a good DM can be amazing. Yeah. But the amount of work that needs to be put in to actually make it good. Yeah. It's just, mm, it's, I don't know, it's not for me. It, yeah, you, you have to be committed. You need to have a certain personality type. Yeah. You really do need that certain and personality type. I just don't have type. that, I'm too lazy. Yeah, I don't have it either for the most part. <laughs> I once tricked my GM and party into letting my character adopt a girl who we made an orphan from destroying a city for the sole purpose of wife husbandry and got away with it at the end of the campaign by telling him that it's a classic apprentice loves adopted master trope. No, no mate. Don't work. No, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't even want to get into that one. I'm not getting into it. You're not forgiven for your sins. <laughs> I've been collecting Warhammer for years, but I hide it from my friends and family due to social stigma. No, the feels. <laughs> I don't know. I'm too much of a nerd to even give a fuck. I know. You know, I think by the point I, I started getting into it, yeah, I was quiet about it. And I wouldn't really tell people about it until like I was about a year or so in. No, James, you told everybody about it. No, I would talk to you about it, but I wouldn't talk to other people. Yeah, you would. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I derail campaigns because I love seeing the party members winging it. I've derailed multiple campaigns while using other players' actions as an excuse to justify my bullshit. I've commissioned lewd art of female characters I've played over the years. More along the lines of pin-up art, but one of them I had a full, sexually explicit comic drawn up of. I also have a few gender benders of the male characters, although no human ones. Mm. Only the monstrous races I've played, because I'm a shameless xenophile. Ugh. <sighs> People guard in the comments when we slag off furries all the time. So that's just not this time, will we? Yeah. We'll give you we'll give the furries a free just pass me, for then one. Let me just sigh. We'll we'll give the furries a free pass for one video. I give tabletop advice on 40k general, even though I've never played a single game. I'm not shocked by that at all, be yeah. honest with you, some of the advice on that fucking general. <laughs> there have been several occasions where a player approached me for erotic role playing with our characters after session ended, and I obliged. Even worse. I run D and D and reskin all the races as anthropomorphic animals. <sighs> we did say we would leave the furries be this one video. Yeah. Right. They're winning though at this point. I ship my characters with an NPC and even draw comics for them. DM already knows and he said he can make it happen. I might be happy, but on the other side, I thought I went too far. Now I get attacked by anxiety. All right. Which one of the skeletons is this? <laughs> <laughs> Which one of you is it? Which one of you is it? Who, who do you think it would be, Megan? Auspicious with the NPC barmaid. Yeah, I'm going to say it was auspicious in this one. I openly oppose the intersection of magical realm trash and games and constantly make fun of it with my gaming friends. Secretly, I want to erotic roleplay as a cute anime girl and this isn't because I want to be a girl but I simply want to create these scenarios to get hard over. <laughs> My horny level can't be contained and it hurts. <laughs> yeah, it really can't be contained at all. 
I'm the Discord tranny who ship posters warned you about. Yes, I play 5th edition online and enjoy Critical Role, though Critical Role is starting to get a bit bland for me lately. <laughs> don't, don't take that out of context. People are going to put... Sign. That's going to be a sign the by... Discord tranny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Megan is the Discord tranny. I am forever DM, and for the last four years or so, I've worked extensive random generation tables for world building, monster generation, etc. It's gotten to the point that the games I run are almost completely automated by these tables. I honestly feel like these tables are a better DM than I'd ever be on my own. These tables, by far, are the most autismo thing I have ever done. I have zero regret. Mate, share your tables out. No, They'd be happy as fuck. Get, get your tables out. Yeah. I rarely accidentally fudge my dice rolls. I'll see a bad number and say a better one without the conscious thought going through my brain, then be too anxious to correct it. I find most of my grip to be terribly boring people outside a tabletop, so most social interaction with them is just feigned enthusiasm because there are no other gaming groups in my area. At a New Year's party, I fucked one of the DM's twin sisters. Hey. <laughs> this, this was four years ago and I still don't know which one it was and it never came up since. Oh, Jesus, that's Fuck. not good. Oof. No. I want a movie involving the big manly men and super sexy gals who play role-playing games regularly, seen from reality and from the player's perspective. Maybe a comedy, but not making fun of the game. But what happens in the game and out of it? Write it, make it happen. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't be bad, but <laughs> they've, they've tried doing that before and it's always turned out to be gay cringe. Yeah, they probably. Always, it always is. If you roleplay as only females, I judge you immensely unless you're an actually good roleplayer. 90% of the time, these people are not. Okay. I have rigged the odds against the guy playing a black man in Call of Cthulhu one-shot because he wouldn't stop screaming the gamer word in the game stop. While I do love playing a human in a multi-species setting, I will always detest playing in a human-only setting, unless the GM is very good. I have on multiple occasions tried to kill NPCs when the GM makes it extremely obvious that they're fudging roles in said NPC's favour to mess with the party. Goes double if the NPCs are Mary Sue's. Yes. Yes. 40k is only good as a tabletop role-playing game setting, in my opinion. And Wargaming serves as nothing but a quarantine zone for the worst and best of role players. That's kind of true, but it is a better... It is a better set than yeah. it is for tabletop, I'll be yeah. honest. I intentionally try to sabotage plans to play out homebrew systems, as most of the time they're always god-awful, god-awful by input of a certain player who instantly tries to par game. I seriously considered dosing my DM with laxatives when he had an NPC rape the entire party, Purple Man style. Hey, we get that ding, 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 fucking sexual misconduct. Yeah. In fairness... I was extremely tired and stressed from work, not in the mood for the events of that particular session, and the GM no longer leads due to personal issues. I've been playing an evil PC for the entirety of the game in secret, with the GM's permission. I set a goal that I would reform when the entire party resolved their issues cohesively, without someone being a total bitch. It's been two dozen sessions, and I'm still secretly an evil PC. <laughs> Sounds about right, be honest with you. I really dislike how a player at my table plays, and the type of characters they make, and how often they distract from the campaign by bringing up unrelated topics. I'm also really attracted to her and have had dreams about her. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Me and my girlfriend has begun serious talks about kids, and a serious argument against it for me is, cut down time dedicated to my longest running passion, DMing role-playing games. <laughs> I've been involved in the hobby since 99 and run three campaigns with varying degree of schedules. And while a kid feels like it could be right, I'm both afraid of fucking it up and losing too much of what I enjoy today. Possibly not exactly what we're confessing here, but fuck it. Need to get it off my chest. Well, that's some confession. Jesus Christ, I don't want to have a kid because I can't, then I won't <laughs> have time to play D&D. <laughs> I know, I know. Sad times. Yeah, for the first couple of years, whenever the kid grows up, <laughs> play D and D with the kid. I know exactly. You'll get there. Don't worry about it. And you so have much. great stories to tell yeah, the kid as well. Yeah, exactly. It'll be good. Holy shit! I'm tired of GMing. There is the hassle of gathering around everyone. One can't stop asking you about the next session, and the other just forgets to answer and never shows up. 
There's a motherfucker who is one of my best friends and still haggles me in private to gain advantages in game. No. No. And my ex used to do it too. Since I'm a social chameleon who's too insecure to raise his voice, I often give in. Then there's the autist. The other autist, the stoner, the other stoner. They make up the evil party and is a sanity rendering experience. But you learn to love the pain. Sanity rending, I say, because the campaign has devolved into memes and aforementioned <laughs> humour. <laughs> Dragged on for three years already, at level 15 out of 20, and the players want me to go on even longer. Featuring a pyromaniac, a retard who fetishizes undead and literature, a boring dwarf, Sasso gang, a bard who got so stoned he mistook himself for a bard, he was a convoker, the oh-so-edgy changeling gunslinger, and a bunch of one-note shit stain ignorant that I lasted no more than one session. Fuck, I hate them so much. Good friends and all, but they're a bunch of... F- Fucking <laughs> bumbling <bum>. buffins. <laughs> if you wanted to learn less rules, you should have tried an easier game. It was your idea, and I've been doing the clown part for three and a half years. You bunch of incompetent bumbling messes. The angel... The two tiefling, the cat, you barely even realised how much you love doing every single encounter in the most excruciating, dragging, dumb proof and self-damaging way. You cry for explanations when you haven't even grasped the basic of role playing. I can't beat your mummy forever and plainly tell you the possible solution to every problem. You gotta grow up and be the big PC sooner or later. Fuck you droid, you're the only one that cares. Fuck D and D, and most importantly, fuck the Sasso guy. <laughs> I really want to know more about the Sasso guy. I want to know more. <laughs> I want to know more about that one. I enjoyed that one. We need to catch up and do the other ones. Yeah, we'll we've do got the comments. We'll do the comments for ne- you as well. Next time, we'll combine the comments from last video and this video. This video together. We'll and pick we'll, out the best. And we'll probably do it what, like next Monday. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do it next Monday. But I hope you guys like this one. We didn't like. Really, we didn't really do any forgiveness. I suppose that's one. I really want to know more of the last one. Yeah. I want to know, like, the background. I want yeah. to hear more of this I know. I think, I think it's worthy of a good story, that one. Yeah. I really hope that we get more of that one down the road. But, look, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Remember to leave your confessions down below. Um, check out Megan's channel. Look, you know the show I'm possessed at this point. Yeah, check out my channel. Uh, check out the models. models. Um, God, fucking everything. furry oh. hunter class. Yeah, yeah. I don't even. All know. That We've got tons of stuff, but like, I don't really want to tell you too much. We're working yeah. on something, and uh, hopefully, it'll be eight in the not so distant future. So I don't really want to spoil it, but we'll see. We'll see. All right. Um, look, I'm supposed to love you as I leave you as well, right? Yep. Yep. All right. See you later. Enjoy. Bye. Bye.